I'm Dutch, I'm the founder of The Bike Shed, and this is one of my staff bikes. A couple of months ago, I did a really short intro video for this Triumph Street Scrambler. And um, it ended up being one of the most watched videos on our YouTube channel. Um, I'm not really sure why that is, apart from the fact that it's a really lovely bike. Um, but the original idea behind that bike was I just wanted something that I could ride to work every day that was going to be reliable and do the job of getting me from A to B in some degree of style. And it was nothing to do with custom bikes or custom bike culture, I just wanted something cool. I've owned a few Triumphs and uh, when the Triumph Street Scrambler came out, I had a go on it and I thought it was absolutely brilliant. I loved it. It was, although it was based around the T100 Street Twin 900cc Bonneville new liquid-cooled engine and bike and frame, it felt really different. The stance felt different, the handling felt different, the way it delivered torque felt different. And I think the whole of the, the riding experience was much more something that was down my street, especially as I learned to ride off-road. So I got the bike, and the idea was I was going to keep it pretty standard and not really mess around with it, but as you can imagine, that didn't last very long. This is very much a Triumph Parts catalogue build. That wasn't particularly intentional. It was just that when Triumph launched these bikes, they added a huge amount of catalogue products straight away so that you could buy bits you wanted and bolt them on. And one of the great things about this new sort of rise of manufacturers' custom products that you can add onto a bike is that you're not messing around with your warranty or um, doing anything that's going to make the bike not perform properly. This is a bike that you can take to your local dealer and they're not going to raise an eyebrow. Um, you can get uh, the bike MOT'd, you can get the bike serviced. This has done nothing to um, invalidate any warranties. But let me run through what I've done to this because it does look pretty different to how it did when it was new. So first of all, let's start with um, the fact that it's no longer a shiny black bike. They did a version of the Street Scrambler in green and um, I've stolen the matte black bodywork from the green bike and I was going to either paint or wrap the shiny black tank in matte black and I realised that if I was going to do that I was going to have to prep it and I thought well I wonder what happens if I just take a little bit of um, 1500 grit wet and dry to the tank and give it a bit of a rub down, how will it look? I've painted enough tanks over the years and I've messed around with surfaces and I've messed around with finishes and I thought it might actually look quite decent and well this is what it looks like. The whole bike is now matte black, the front fender comes from a company in Thailand, a lot of the parts on the bike are already black or matte black. I got the headlight bracket powder coated in black um, with some help from the guys at Jack Lilly in Ashford, thanks very much guys. So a lot of the, the bike was, was already set up, the wheels are already black and having done all of that and matte blacked the whole bike. I then decided to complement that with a brown seat which was upholstered by a guy called Brian. Brian did a really good job of me sending him the original seat and re-upholstering it in brown leather which matches the bar brace pad also in brown leather which is part of the Triumph Accessories catalogue and then I put the brown barrel grips on it. So now we have the, the matte black and tan bike which by the way Vicky hates, she says it's horrible and black and brown should never be seen together but I really like it. So cosmetically the bike has gone from being um, greys and blacks and shiny blacks into being matte black and tan and I really really like that colour scheme, it's very similar to the colours I had on my T100 uh, built by Down and Out Cafe Racers. So let's go into the details of the modifications. The first thing I did when I got the bike was um, I fitted a set of TKC 80 tyres. They're tyres that feature on a lot of bikes in the custom scene um, and actually they work really well in the wet and in the dry on normal roads. They're not just dirt bike tyres although they are proper knobblies and you can use them off-road. But this bike has got Scrambler written on the side panel and to me if a bike's got the word Scrambler on it you should be able to scramble it. You know, for an old school dirt bike scrambler, it's quite a capable off-road machine. It works well. And it's got the configuration for it. So scrambler tyres, and along with those tyres, decent suspension at the rear. I've fitted the factory aftermarket rear shocks made by Fox. And also, the best thing about this bike, the Triumph Street Twin Scrambler Kit pipe made by Vance and Hines. Now this pipe was brought out when the Street Twin first appeared in 2016, before Triumph brought out the Street Scrambler, and they made this pipe as part of a kit, but then they were told a year later they weren't allowed to sell them anymore because they didn't meet homologation rules. So this pipe is tiny, 
It's a straight through pipe, no cat, no baffles. It sounds absolutely amazing. And also it allows the engine to breathe more freely. And uh, the bike certainly feels lighter and quick with this pipe on it. And it's proper high level scrambler pipe. Everybody asks me, does it burn your leg? The answer is no, it doesn't. It's got a really nice kink in it because you're not dealing with a catalytic converter. Um, it's been really easy for them to route the pipe out of the way. It also doesn't run that hot. So I can actually rest my um, leg if I'm wearing jeans on the pipe and it doesn't burn at all. And also it's fine for pillion. And even with the pillion pad removed, a Vicky can still get on the back of this bike um, I've got pillion pegs fitted and Vicky doesn't burn her leg on this exhaust either. So it's a win-win-win as far as I'm concerned. Working from the back, also I fitted Triumph's own aftermarket tail tidy and a set of Triumph LED indicators. These are quite rugged and I might get rid of these. Um, I did really like them, but now so much of the bike looks a bit more custom that I'm inclined to change these. So I might go back to Dan's brilliant um, indicator tutorial where he tells you how not to fit a set of indicators and follow some of that to change these. Um, but mostly what I've done at the back is take stuff off and throw it away. I took the Triumph tail tidy, I threw away the metal extender bracket which was where the number plate was supposed to sit and it also had a few other important bits on there like the reflector and the number plate light. I threw those in the bin and I fitted the plate directly to the um, plastic extension and then I just cut it off with a hacksaw and filed it down and made it look neat. And it looks pretty factory. Um, I really like this setup. It does keep the mud off my back. I don't get splattered. Um, the number plate is lit by the rear light. Um, I'm not sure if that would pass muster in an MOT or not, but I can very easily refix the number plate illuminator because it shines up from underneath. So that's very easy for me to put back on if I need to. So again, the only thing I'm really going to do with this back end of the bike, I think it looks perfect. I think the design, the shapes of the bodywork are spot on. Dan sent me a link to a company that made this funky little flush petrol cap, which is no longer lockable, but I'm not really bothered about that. It just fits the look of the bike a lot better, much leaner lines than the shiny thing that was on there before. And then apart from that, I changed this kind of injector cover for a black version and I've got a few black badges here and there. So anyway, there's, um, that's kind of that side of the bike and that end of it. I've also fitted aftermarket mirror from the Triumph catalogue, aftermarket adjustable levers from the Triumph catalogue. We already talked about the bar brace from the catalogue. Um, I've got the Triumph headlight cover, again, from the catalogue. The front indicators also from the catalogue. And then I've got uh, these crash mushrooms on the front, just in case I drop the bike, because I'm going to take it off road to help protect the bottom of the forks. And they're also from the catalogue. So it is pretty much a catalogue custom bike um, with just a few changes to the finishes. And overall, it's absolutely brilliant to ride. It fuels really well with this setup. I'm thinking about fitting an aftermarket air filter just to see if I can help the bike breathe a little bit better and I'll let you guys know how that goes and the indicators obviously but apart from that this bike is something that you can go to your dealer and order all the parts for um, and you're going to end up with a bike which is extremely practical it's always going to start on the button even if you haven't ridden it for three or four weeks it's going to get you from A to B I can ride this across town or I could ride this to beer, beer Ritz to wheels and waves it's going to do the job for me you can sit on the motorway at 80 miles an hour and it's perfectly comfortable or you can tear around the back streets of Islington it's an absolutely brilliant bike and I love it but the real thing that sells this bike is none of what I've just described it's the riding experience and the sound for a bike that actually doesn't have a huge amount of brake horsepower on paper, it really delivers torque and it handles absolutely brilliantly. The brakes are perfectly adequate, the suspension's perfectly adequate, um, and I absolutely love it. But to hear the real magic, let's take it outside and listen to those pipes. So this is what the bike sounds like, and for me, this is what it's all about. <laughs> 